Hey guys, welcome back to another video. What we're going to be talking about today is three mistakes that you should definitely avoid as a software engineer. Now these mistakes apply whether you're just learning how to code or whether you're already working full time. They're very easy to make, so you should definitely keep all this in mind. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. So let's just get right into it. So the first mistake that you should definitely avoid is delaying small tedious tasks when you're coding. I've done this before. You've probably done this before. It's very popular. Um, and what I'm talking about is like when you're writing code and you see that you've written something and you think to yourself, oh, okay, this could be done a bit better or this could be a bit more efficient, but it's working right now. So I'll just get back to it later, right? I'm just going to refactor it uh, at a later time. Now, the thing is, you're never going to do that. You know, you'll never, you're never going to do that because odds are you're just not going to be in the mood or you're just going to forget about it. So the best thing you could do is when you see a situation like this, you just refactor it right away. You, you spend a couple of minutes, you write how it's supposed to, what it's supposed to look like. You make it a bit cleaner and then you move on with your life and you forget about it. Otherwise, you're just going to keep writing this like this good code, but it's not perfect. And then when you move on, you're going to do it again and again, and you're going to, it's going to pile up. And then at the end of the day, your code base is just going to be a ton of, you know, good, but not great code that could have been a lot better. Had you just spent a couple of minutes here and there refactoring it to how it's supposed to be. This also applies to things like writing test cases. So this is something that I still struggle with myself and it's just writing test cases before you actually start writing the code. It's kind of called test driven development. It's, it's what I try to do. I, I, I'm a big fan of it because I just think it's a good way to go about writing your code. You write your tests before you actually write any functions or any endpoints or any stuff like that. So that at first everything's failing. And then as you're implementing what you're supposed to be doing, you know, things will slowly start passing. Now, the thing now why I'm saying is writing it before is because I always tell myself, OK, I'm going to write these tests afterwards. And then what ends up happening is you never do it. Right. It's exactly like refactoring your code. You just say it's going to happen later. But then eventually, you know, something else pops up. And, and because it's like a small, tedious task that isn't doesn't seem as important as everything else, you keep leaving it for later and then it never gets done. The second mistake you should definitely avoid is not documenting your code or maybe even worse, just writing bad documentation. Now this gets really confusing, not only for yourself, but for other people that try to work on the code as well. Because let's say you just leave a very confusing comment for yourself, right? You're writing the code and you're in, you know the context, you know everything that's going on and you leave a comment for yourself, like to do, uh, you know, to do finish this function, right? Something like that. And then you know what you're talking about at the moment, but when you revisit it later, even a week down the road, a month down the road, whatever it is, you're going to see that comment and be like, Hmm, what the fuck was I talking about? Right? You'll have no idea what you were talking about and then you won't have any idea what to actually fix or what to actually complete. And that's how you get yourself in a pretty bad situation. Now, this also applies to when you're writing documentation as you're writing your code and it's not very clear. If you're just writing something that's very vague about the code that you're writing and then a new engineer comes on your team, right? They're going to see it and be very confused. And that's the opposite of the reaction that you're supposed to have with documentation. Someone's supposed to come in and it's supposed to be very easy to collaborate. They're supposed to not ask you at all and just, you know, read your code, read your documentation, understand what's happening. Maybe ask you a couple of questions, like just for clarity, but you know, they should just be able to work on it without you know, having needing a lot of help from you. That's the point of documentation. Collaboration is one of the biggest parts of software engineering. Bad documentation really, really makes it hard to collaborate on new projects. Now, don't worry, like this happens all the time, even at big tech companies, even at Google, Facebook, you know, bad documentation is everywhere. A lot of people do it. But if you can get into the habit of writing good documentation for yourself, especially when you are just learning how to code, if you're just starting to learn how to code, not it's not all about just getting the function to work and writing it and getting it to run whatever it's also very important that you get in the habit of writing good documentation it'll pay dividends later and trust me it's a great habit to get into and the last one the last mistake that you should definitely avoid is not writing consistent or readable code so there's a lot of different different cases here right i have a list here so whether you're like you know some files you're capitalizing some files you're writing lowercase some variables you're using uh, plural values and some you're using singular where you're storing your constants right sometimes i see like you know constants get stored in the file itself then some some different constants are stored in like a global directory and some different constants are stored in the directory you're working in right it makes it super confusing it's so inconsistent you have no idea where each thing is stored and it just be quickly quickly becomes too much to maintain and then like you know even if you're returning values from a function or an endpoint and then some are lowercase, uh, some are snake case, some are camel case, you know, just all these little things that are inconsistent throughout your code make it very, very hard to read, 
very hard to understand. And then when you when someone new comes in, they'll see, okay, this isn't snake case, this isn't camel case. What do I do? Like, what's the standard here? And it just kind of lowers the productivity of the entire team when there's no real consistency. These cons these inconsistencies might seem small at first, right? When you're writing it, you're like, oh, it doesn't matter. This will be camel case or this will be plural. Who cares? And then as it all adds up together after, you know, you complete the project and you see that there's so many inconsistencies, you'll really feel it. You'll really feel how hard it is to understand it, how just unpleasant it is to read. The more consistent your code is, the easier it is to read, the easier it is to maintain, and most importantly, the easier it is to collaborate with other people. Writing consistent and readable code is crucial to your success as a software engineer. Guys, focus on these mistakes. Don't make them yourself in the workplace. Get in the habit of you know, writing good documentation, of writing consistent code, of stuff like this. Trust me, it's, it's a very, very important skill to have. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you really like the content, feel free to like and subscribe for more. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Have a nice day.